Let's talk about The Man Who Killed Hitler and then The Bigfoot. Ah, so this is one film. This is one film, <laughs> yes. This is, as the title suggests, it's a curio and a half. Um, it's the first feature from, another first feature from a director called Robert Kraskowski. Um, and it stars Sam Elliott, the great Sam Elliott, who I think came to this shoot almost instantly off the back of A Star Is Born. So he wrapped on A Star Is Born and a few days later he was off filming uh, The Man Who Killed Hitler and then The Bigfoot. Now I love this title because it kind of throws you off course halfway through. The Man Who Killed Hitler is setting up this kind of potentially serious, dark alternate history story. And then the idea you're saying, well, he killed Hitler and then the Bigfoot. It's moving it like this kind of hairpin turn into fantasy, into grindhouse silliness at the end. And it really leaves you not knowing what to expect. And the film absolutely trades on that. You know, there's at one point, um, Sam Elliott... Some John Lithgow in my head, sorry. Right. From the Bigfoot Exactly, film. Bigfoot and Hendersons. Yeah. yeah, right. I mean, that's a resonance for... Because that was Harry and the Hendersons in the UK, right? But in, in the US. But whenever you hear it, I mean, that's the kind of definitive Bigfoot movie up until this point. This, I think, sorry, has the potential to unseat okay. it. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the film actually even says Sam Elliott has this line in it where he says, where he's reflecting back on his life of having killed Hitler and then the Bigfoot, he says, it's nothing like the comic book that you want it to be. And that's like, that kind of absolutely nails it. The film approaches this two-part story in a spirit of utter seriousness. And it actually weirdly reminded me of um, Beowulf in that you have this story where a great hero slays these two apocal monsters, you know, with this kind of half a lifetime's gap in between. You know, Beowulf is Grendel, Grendel's mother. And then this very, very long time, I think 50 years elapses or something, and then he slays the dragon. And in this, this Sam Elliott, or rather the, the, the young version of Sam Elliott, who's played by uh, Aidan Turner from Poldark, yeah. um, he assassinates Hitler, as the title, of course, says. Yeah. And then uh, Sam Elliott's character is, is re-enlisted as a, a retired kind of former soldier special operative by the US and Canadian governments to go and kill Bigfoot. So, you know, this is his life is kind of bookended by these two incredibly strange jobs in which he has to kill someone. And Sam Elliott approaches this with magnificent gravitas. And here we can hear him reflecting on uh, the first part of his life. The Germans. They moved a lot. And I moved with them. I shattered the right back and forth across their gill garden lands. And I moved when they moved. Until the time was right. Until I knew where he was. Until I knew it was him. And I caught up with him. You're serious? The Germans covered it up. And so did we. And history marched on just like you read about. By the time I got to that miserable man, his words had grown beyond him. And his ideas continued to do all the damage they could possibly do without him. That day I just killed a man. What he stood for was unstoppable voice man that's from this pivotal monologue in the middle of the film a monologue i have to say it made me well up i mean it's incredibly well performed and as i say he's taking it very seriously you can hear by the score you know mm -hmm. rather than this kind of grindhousey synth thing that you might expect maybe john carpenter style there's this very sort of rich uh open-hearted john williams style approach to the music which you know completely again it, it alters the way in which you receive this story which on the face of it is completely absurd twice over um, it's a kind of a film that is a reflection on mortality and you know the fact that his life is, as I say, it's been bookended by these two high profile and ridiculous assassinations. Um, he's reflecting on what it means for your life to have amounted to having killed people. You know, it's, it, he's effectively an old soldier character yeah. who is suffering from a kind of, uh, you know, undiagnosed PTSD from what he's been through, uh, what he saw in the Second World War. And this idea that killing Hitler actually doesn't achieve anything because the ideology marches on without him, which is what he was talking about in that monologue. That's kind of reflected in this fairground mirror sense in the Bigfoot section of the story because Bigfoot has to be assassinated because he is spreading this plague, like a real kind of germ-like plague, to human beings. And so he has to be got rid of because, again, there's this sense of contagion and it has to be cut off at the root. And when his character comes face to face with Bigfoot, I should say as well, the special effects on this were supervised by Douglas Trumbull, the, the kind of legendary special effects advisor um, who directed Silent Running and has done an incredible, a real practical effects guru. He did the amazing kind of space sequences on uh, Terence Malick's um, Tree of Life mm -hmm. and it just has this kind of 
intuitive sense for how to make something look wondrous in a way that is uh you know physical it's palpable yeah. it's it's, yeah. it's it's very very not cgi the cgi approach would have been totally wrong for this film and when the character comes face to face with bigfoot towards the end bigfoot is this sort of slightly scrawny pathetic sinister creature rather than the big friend of john lithgow that we all know <laughs> from uh from from bigfoot and the hendersons so the film is doing a lot of deeply, deeply strange and, and sort of thought-provoking stuff. It reminded me a lot of Bubba Hotep, this the, the film which Bruce Campbell plays um, this elderly Elvis Presley who battles an Egyptian mummy in a retirement home. I mean, it's, you know, this absurd, bizarre setup, mm -hmm. but it's being used to say things about ageing that are actually fairly well thought through and sure. profound. Um, I think, you know, if you go and see this film for Hitler and Bigfoot, you're doing it wrong. But go and see it for the man and for the story at the core of it and for this beautiful Sam Elliott performance. And I think you come out of it pretty pleased with what you've seen. Sounds like it surprised you. It did very, very much because the title suggests kind of grindhouse nonsense and that's not what it is at all.